What's up guys, I'm going to go over a quick tier list for you guys today. It might not be that quick actually, but I'm going to break down as much of it as I can. Um, we're going to avoid going over mages, we're going to cover mainly junglers, maybe some guardians, warriors, just things that realistically could be played in the jungle and you could be very successful with. Even gods like Bacchus and Guan, I'm going to throw them in there, even though I might not think they're very good. As you can see on the side, I have all the junglers on the top, <clears throat> mages, hunters on the bottom, I'm not going to be playing those. We're going to go ahead and start off with Al Kuang. I put Al Kuang in S tier. I feel like he's fallen down a step. Not too far. I still think he's second, maybe third in there. But he got nerfed. I'm pretty sure his three had a, is a longer cooldown now. He got some scaling reduced and damage shifted over to his second ability a little bit. That's not the main issue that I think brings him down. I'm sure, yes, it does hurt him, obviously. It, it nukes the damage. It, it's cool. It's, it's going to hurt him. But I think the biggest thing is this blink meta that we're in. It really hurts Al Kuang. At first, it looked like it was going to help him. He's got extra mobility. Awesome. But when your team is being initiated on, which is very, very common with a lot of the other blink assassins like Sir Ket, Awelix, um, just uh, even Kali, if they have the ability to initiate on you, you almost always get poked out instantly in this, unless they misplay. And I think this hurts Al Kuang the most. For me, that brings him down to S plus. Back before he was, S I mean, sorry, it brings him down to S. Back before he was S plus easy. With takeover games, his early was obviously a little weak, but mid to late game, he was just unstoppable. Right now, I think the early is even weaker because of blink meta. I think the mid is a little bit weaker on top of nerfs and blink. And then late game, yeah, you'll still one shot, but it's still the same scenario where if you're being initiated on, your team fight is gonna be very bad. You've seen a lot of people picking out Kuang in the SPL lately in North America and EU, and they haven't had very much success. Nobody that's played them. And usually they're going up against the Sirket. And that just kind of shows how Sirket has really surged up to the top as the number one pick in basically the world in the jungle. And Al Kuang's kind of fallen down a step. Um, so those are the main things. I don't think any other gods have really become great and they just pushed Al Kuang out. I think it's the blink meta on top of small nerfs. It, it's really hurt him. Next, I'm going to go over Arachne. Arachne, I'm going to throw an A-. minus. I played a lot of Arachne in the SPL in competitive. Maybe not so much lately, but over my course of playing in a competitive scene. Even in casuals and ranked, I don't think Arachne is very good. She is still very pub stoppy, but the blink meta hasn't helped her that much. She's just not that great in team fights. There's a lot of team fighting early, like it has been all season, and I really think this brings her down. Um, she hasn't really been picked by anybody, but I, I just I don't think she's very good. She's on the verge of being B for me. I, I would not recommend playing her at all. The Wheelix for me is going to be S+. She's amazing. This Blink meta has helped her a lot. Um, she still has the downside of her team fights are not very good. It's very, very hard to team fight unless you have a lot of initiation on your team and you can go into the fight late. If you're expected to be the one doing most of the damage from the beginning to the end of a fight, it's not going to work out for you. You do have a lot of gank potential early, probably one of the best early game gods in the game uh, at a competitive level and a, rate, like a high rank level. Granted, you're still going to have gods like Thor and Thanatos who do more damage. The Awelix has a lot of control with knockups, a lot of setup, has damage immunity. Uh, ult is amazing when people don't have beads. It's just a very, very good god, and it's something you have to think about when you're playing Awelix. Just early game good, mid game pretty good. Team fighting is very rough because you're usually building full damage. Just think about those things. Next is Athena on my list. Athena is going to be an S tier god. She's on the verge of S plus, has almost always been pretty much S plus for me. But I don't want to sit here and tell you to play Athena when you can't carry a game on Athena. You can't control all of an outcome on Athena. You can help a lot. You can do a lot for your team. But Athena relies on a good team. Like, purely. You have to have a good team. You have to have communication or it's not going to work out for you. Athena's clear is great for when you're doing the laning phase to, to jungle boss, those rotations around when you're helping mid lane, whatever. Um, you have a lot of poke potential with your taunt into your teammates' abilities, but like I said, relies a lot on your team. Don't play Athena when you're queuing by yourself and you don't know anyone in the game. Just don't do it. It won't be fun. Granted, if you're playing with your friends and they're better, you can talk to them, or you're just playing high-level ranked, even mid-level ranked, as long as people understand communication, Comboing abilities off of taunts. Um, don't waste your ult too much. Use it for proper rotations. Like you will be good. It, she's an amazing jungler. I realize not many people play her, but I really think people need to, to put more time into her because she's great. Next on the list is Bacchus. Just kind of like one of those fun time type things. <clears throat> I play Bacchus in casuals all the time. Would never ever play him in competitive or in a serious rank game. <coughs> 
Uh, sorry, guys. But, um, yeah, he's not that good. He has no farm potential, really. He's got a lot of setup and a lot of burst, but no sustain in team fights. Um, you're not going to see much Bacchus anytime soon. Bakasura, one of those other situations, I think he's probably B tier. Needs way too much farm to be relevant. Gang potential is very, very low until you finish two or three items, usually three items. Um, his early is not good at all. Yeah, you can auto attack a lot, but if the other team has any control, they're going to beat you. Bakasura realistically has no control. His ult is a small amount of control, but it's control in a sense of I can keep you from moving too much, not necessarily I can lock you down. It's a completely different sense of than like a Thor, so I don't recommend Bakasura. Bastet, A- minus for me. She's got a counter in a Wheelix now, a hard counter. A lot of other gods do much better than her. She's very, very bad in team fight situ situations. If a team is grouped up, yeah, you can get a little bit of poke off sometimes, but usually it's going to be very hard for you. If the other team is initiating starting fights better than your team, you're going to have no place in the team fights. Cats are usually worthless. They're going to get blown up instantly by most abilities. I really don't recommend Bastet. If you can snowball early, she's great, but at a high level play, and especially since it's Bastet, she's not that good early. It's not like you're going to invade and get a million kills on her. I don't recommend her at all. Bologna for me, S tier. Bologna is still amazing. Bologna is great. She got a nerf on her ult. It's a longer cooldown. It doesn't matter. Got a nerf on her slow. Doesn't matter. Bologna is probably second or third in the best jungle gods in the game. She has a lot of control, disarm, she has a stun on her ult, she's a slow, she's got huge burst damage. If you build auto attack, which you should be, you should be looking at my build list, uh, build videos. I have them previously from like a week ago or so. Go watch it. If you build correctly, you will do a ton of damage, you will not die, You're, you will control all the fights for your team. And that's all that needs to be said. She has no real counter matchups. She can have a rough time against some gods, but if you play properly, you'll be okay. Kabraken for me. I'm putting Kabraken at B tier. I hate Kabraken. I don't want anyone playing Kabraken. He is extremely snowballing. If you do not get massive kills early, you'll be worthless. His control mid to late is horrible. Really, no control at all. Your main control is your third ability, your tremors, and that can be interrupted very easily. Uh, the damage does not keep scaling very high. Even like it's just you're not going to be doing very much for your team. You're not a Ymir. You're not uh, like a warrior, not like a Hercules. It's not the same. It's just not the same damage, not the same control. I don't recommend playing Kabraken. Chalk. I hate Chalk. I hate Chalk so much, I'm going to put him in C. Chalk has an early game, which is great. You have great clear and poke. Awesome. You fall off super hard. You become irrelevant. I don't care what anyone says. Even in the solo lane, do not play Chalk. Yeah, it's fun. It's great. You're going to carry your team. No, you're not. You're going to do no damage. You're going to be there to be in the way of the, like for your team. You're just going to be there, which isn't like it's awesome but it also sucks because it's not a big enough presen presence for me to warrant ever playing chalk i don't just don't play chalk you'll have more fun playing bacchus or bacchus than you will chalk just leave him out of it bender for me is going to be a plus he's good counter matchup to a lot of gods when ratataster was op he was very strong but he was n he's never been that god that you just go to even back in season one when you saw a lot of Thor, a lot of Fenrir, a lot of Mercury. Fenrir is not that good. He, he's just, he's got a great early game. He has a decent amount of control. But even his control falls off with beads. And if there's a gamble on the other team, your ult is usually worthless. There's a lot of ways to counterplay a Fenrir. I just don't recommend playing Fenrir unless you just want to go for the early snowball. He's great at getting kill sorry, kills early. He's great at fighting early. Yeah, your control is great early. But like I said, everything is early based. If you shift into that auto attack build that you will see me go sometimes, you're playing for the late game, and even then, it's really hard for you to position and team fight like an ADC when you're a melee attack god. If you can get into 1v1 scenarios, you're going to win. Maybe even to 1v2 sometimes. But in a good team situation, a good competitive situation, it's all 5 versus 5s. There aren't 1v1s. No one's going to allow that to happen, so I recommend staying away from Fenrir. Freya is going to be A plus for me also. I think she's great. She's very squishy and can be invaded, but her mid to late is awesome, just like she plays in the ADC role. One of the biggest flaws is that she's a better ADC than she is a jungler. She can farm safer over there. It's a better time for her. If you are looking to carry games and play for late, Freya's a good option. Like I said, just watch out for invades. Make sure you pair up with a good solo laner so you're not getting invaded. And I don't recommend taking Freya away from your ADC. If your ADC wants Freya, give him Freya. Let him go. Guan Yu, putting Guan Yu at A minus. I think his team sustain on healing is interesting and could be a fun time for a lot of teams. 
I don't think he's very good. His game potential is low. People with mobility, you'll, you're never going to kill unless they misplay very hard. Your three can be interrupted. Your dash is a great slow, but it, it's mainly the heal and the ult. So you have a heal that's great. You have an ult that's going to be good in team fights later. You're a very team fight oriented god. Not that great in this meta. You can't control mid harpies well unless you have a good supporting team. He's not one of those gods you just pick and go with. You you base team comps around him. You make sure the other team's not going to get too much anti healing. There's a lot of variables that come into you picking Guan, so I don't recommend picking Guan. Hebo, one of the only mages I will talk about in the jungle. I'm going to put Hebo at an A. Hebo is amazing. Purple Pot Hebo, your clear is actually pretty good early and your poke is kind of scary. Gods that can get to you and get in your face are going to be rough though. Uh, do not play Hebo in the Fenrir. Do not play Hebo in the Circuit. You probably going to have a rough time against gods like Thor, but when the other team's playing Guardians like, I don't know, say Ymir, or they're playing junglers that are not necessarily the top, top tier junglers, even Bologna. You can play Hebo against Bologna and do well as long as your positioning is flawless. But he does do good against gods that aren't aren't your Alquang, aren't your Sirkat, aren't your Fenrir's, just those gods. Um, you can do well against Kali, you can knock up a Kali and insta-kill him. You want to avoid Loki also. I'm just trying to go over the gods you want to play and not play against. You usually want to play to farm, but if you can get those level 5 fights when you're going to ult somebody and insta-kill them, it's almost always worth it. You just have to look to make sure you're not overextending in team fights and you're not wasting your ult. If you waste your ult, you will die every time. Every single time you will die. Next is Hercules. Hercules for me is also going to be an A tier. Uh, he can be count countered by anti-healing, but with the reduce, the, the nerf to uh, weakening curse, Hercules is a little bit better. His mobility is low, so don't match him up against high mobility gods. Do not play Hercules against Sir Cat. Do not play Hercules against an Odin. Uh, you will have bad, bad times, but you do have a lot of control. So as long as your team has initiation and mobility on their part, and you have ways to get into a fight, especially with Blink, you'll probably be good to go on Hercules. Just try it out for fun. Um, I'm sure it'll be a good time as long as you can land your combos, your pull into your stun, into your ult. You'll, you'll get kills, you'll have fun. Kali. Kali's going to be S- minus for me. With the addition of Capri into the jungle, Capri, whatever, into the or sorry, not into the jungle, into the meta, into the game, you have a second reset potential if you have them both on the same team. If you can communicate that where one person's going to ult and then you're going to save it and then the other person's going to ult, you're never going to die on Kali. You're still playing for the late game, which is the end of the whole point with Kali, always has been. Make sure you're building right. Um, this this build where people are going crit third item does no damage. It is one of the least damaging like uh, builds I've ever seen. I have gone against five or six colleagues who go uh, boots itch of all rage. I I'm never scared. I've never ever not like been scared to one v one that Kali. A Kali with kin size, a Kali with uh, itch of all executioner, they will tear you up. I don't know what the exact math numbers are, I just know I personally, whenever I see someone build Rage 3rd item, I'm all for fighting against them and just destroying them, I'm good to go. So make sure you build the right build on Kali, uh, I do have a build page on my stream, uh, it might be somewhere else mentioned in my videos, I'm really not sure, I'll try to go over her here in the next couple weeks, but yeah, that's my placement for Kali. Kepri is one of those troll, have fun, mess around gods, you're all hilarious, um, you have crazy abilities, you're a big fat bug, whatever. Capri's not that good. Don't focus too much on Capri. Kumbakarna saw a small buff. I think in a casual setting, Kumbakarna can be very fun to play. In a high ranked or competitive setting, I would not recommend it. He got damage buffs to his ult, and I believe his one. I'm not sure. I know a couple of his abilities got damage buffs, and he does crazy damage now, especially once he is max ranked ult. His ult hits for like like 800 base or something crazy. So if you can blink in and get to a mage, blink in and get to a hunter, blink in and get to a squishy assassin, you will almost one-shot them, so as long as your team is there to combo, or you are just looking to push somebody out of the fight, you will do that with Kumba Karna. You just, he's one of those gods that he's ability-based, and his abilities are on decent cooldown, so you're going to throw your abilities out and not have too much to do. So you need to make sure you use them very, very wisely. Loki, put him at A, just because it is there is potential to play Loki. You'll get invaded. Um, you'll probably be behind almost the whole game, but if you can make it to late and one-shot people, good for you. With this whole tank meta that we're in, where everyone's building, your solo laners are building four tank defensive items that are all physical defense, you're going to have a bad time. You're even seeing junglers build defense, you're going to have a bad time. But Loki's can one-shot mages, Loki can one-shot hunters, just uh, play for the mid to late game. You can even split push, which is one of the more annoying things to do in ranked. You can win games off of straight split pushing, which is amazing, and it's, it's not fun to play against at all. So keep that in mind when you play Loki, if you're really interested in playing Loki. I'm putting Mercury... At, I, I'm going to put him at A-. minus. 
I almost want to put Mercury at A because he is interesting in the meta. You there is potential to play these very frontline-y, three guardian, three warrior ma uh, meta matchups, whatever, on your team, and then you throw a Mercury into the mix. And he doesn't have to go into the fight right away. He can sit back and kind of mess around and do what he needs to do, look for the right opening into a fight. But his early game and even his mid game are so weak that he's just not viable. It's not a good choice for you. Even at level 5, your ult is great. You hit somebody with a stun, but you don't do any damage. Unless your team is there to combo perfectly, you have those mid laners, those mid, uh, mid mages that are like Poseidons and stuff, and the other team doesn't have actives. You're, that's the only way you're going to do well. Um, bats at level 5 is so much stronger than a Mercury at level 5. A Thor at level 5 is even stronger than a Mercury at level 5. And back in Season 1, that was not the case. This has been the case all this season based on item changes, based on the new gods that have been put in the meta. Just gods like Sir Ket can control a Mercury and are never going to be worried about a Mercury. It, it's just not going to happen. Next up, Nija. I don't like Nija at all, but I am going to put the boy girl <laughs> at an A-. Um, I don't think playing... This guy is going to be a good choice for you. Beads completely counters in Nijah. Your early game is great. Your mid game is decent. Your late game you fall off almost no matter how far ahead you are just because of actives and team fight. Your team fight potential, one missed alt, and you there's a good chance you're losing your team fight. So you literally could lose your team fight even if you're up by 5k gold just by missing one major ability or even getting called out of position having to waste your ability to get out. The 2 does bring a lot of counterplay and bait potential, which is awesome. But like I said, that's early mid. Late game, that heal isn't that crazy. I don't recommend putting too much time in Nijah, but if you have fun with him, then go. Go for it. Go, go have your fun. Nemesis. Going to be an A for me. Nemesis just isn't putting out too much damage, doesn't have much control. The slow is great, but Heavenly is a very common active right now with the lacking of no one gets hogged. So you have open slots for our actives, and Heavenly is on, on almost every team. So good Heavenly place on the Nemesis is just going to kite that, that person who gets ulted away. And Nemesis can be locked down very easily. The shield is great, but Nemesis is one of those gods you pick into a four tank comp just to, to make sure you can kill somebody. It's not one of the, she's not one of those gods you can just pick like first or second pick and then do whatever you want with. It's not gonna happen. You have a weak early game, you have weak clear when you're rotating to the mid lane. Your build takes a little bit of time to progress and to actually put out the damage you want to put out. Odin for me moved up a tier. Odin for me is A plus. In this healing meta where people can't just buy a weakening and counter healing, you have to be able to play Odin. If a team has three healers on the other team, weakening curse is not going to kill them. You need the 100% healing. Odin with red pot does a ton of damage early. Mid game, he's still going to do damage as long as you're building a mix of damage and tank. Late game, he's going to fall off, but you're still going to be able to ult. You're still going to be able to harass people. You're still going to be able to get in their face. Odin is an amazing jungler for you to pick up right now to be able to counter an entire team. There are a lot of hunters that are playing Shibalanke, Medusa, Rama. They can't get out of an Odin ult. You're getting healers that don't have leaps. You're getting mid laners like Agni and Poseidon that don't have a way out. You're even seeing junglers. Junglers are more more, more on the other side. You're, you're not going to lock down many junglers. But for the rest of the team, even the solo laners, you, you have the potential to lock them in in team fights, which is what you're going for. Osiris is next on my list. Osiris is going to be A tier. He's... Low mobility, which is bad in this meta. Blink has no benefit to Osiris, really. Um, you have to build tanky to be relevant. You need farm to be relevant. So unless you get crazy kills early off of mispositioning on the other team, you're not going to find yourself in a good place. I'd avoid playing Osiris very much. If you just like the idea of being tanky, auto-attack god, and farming for the first 15 minutes of a game, go for it. Ratatasker has fallen off dramatically. Ratatasker is going to be A for me. His dash got nerfed. He can only dash three times, so that made Opal less valuable. And that brought up Emerald. I think Emerald Acorn is the best Acorn for Ratatasker right now. You can sustain in fights. You can 1v1 very easily. You can bait out team fights and bait out other players. But your damage output is limited. Your mobility, while it's still great, is now limited. And there's a hard counter matchup in Ares and Fenrir, which are both being played a decent amount in this meta. Ratatasker is not at the top of my list. I don't recommend playing Ratatasker. Ravana, A tier for me. Ravana is awesome, but he's one of those situations just like Osiris. Low mobility, you do have a great immunity frame on your two. Um, you have a lot of lockdown potential and slow potential, but Heavenlies uh, can get the other team out. You need a decent build, like you, you need a good build and you need decent farm to get to that point where you have three, four, five items to be able to just get in their face and do what you want. Once you're into a fight, you're not getting out, so that's something you have to worry about. You really have to maximize using your second ability, which is the immunity. 
to damage and CC, whatever lockdown, you have to use that perfectly or you're going to be in just a bad place. Now for the next god, the best jungler in Smite right now by far is Sir Ket. Her damage is crazy. Her lockdown is crazy. As long as you're doing the uh, combo of abilities properly, then there's nothing that will stop you. Blink meta, the fact that you can get blink and beads on Sir Ket is broken. You can start every fight, get in and out. You can start a fight, full rotate on it like somebody. Use a full combo. You can ult, 2, 1, whatever them, and just jump out. Your 1 will be back up. You can beads and jump out. You can beads and dash out. You are nearly unkillable unless you position incorrectly or you just make a sacrifice because that's what you're looking to do. Um, mid to late, or early mid late, all strong. With Red Pot, you can almost kill somebody early. If you have a teammate with you and you get a full, uh, you get a 2 and a 1 combo and an auto attack off while your teammate's beating on them, they're dead. They will not live through that. Sir Ket should be your number one priority. If you want to play the best jungler in the game, you should be playing Sir Ket. You should focus and learn how to play Sir Ket. She does have a little bit of a learning curve, but once you make it past that curve, it's not going to take you that long. Um, you'll be good to go. Sun Wukong is next on my list. Sun Wukong is actually fairly interesting right now. I'm going to put him at A+. With, you see a lot of Sun Wukong with the uh, new blue stone in the solo lane. Uh, you've even seen him in the Hunter, the duo lane. He's very, very strong. I think he's always been kind of strong. He just hasn't found his place, especially not in the jungle, since that's what we're, what's we're really what we're really talking about. But you can potentially get Bumba's boots, then a blue stone, and then go into your regular build. You will do a lot of damage. You're really hard to kill. You have a lot of team fight control. You can just run at people and get in their face. Those are all options. You play some Wukong as a frontline. It's always going to happen. You're not going to be a carry some Wukong out of the jungle. Even if you get ahead, you still want to build a little tanky, and you'll be good to go. I would not be surprised if we saw more Sun Wukong just because of his control presence, um, damage presence, frontline presence. It's all it's all there. He's got a full kit. It's just not quite top level. I would not take Sun Wukong away from your solo laner, though. That's not going to be a good option for you. Thanatos comes down for me to an A tier. He's a counter matchup. He counters Thor. That's, about his, that's his strongest counter. I have a video that talks about other counters and other matchups and matchups you want to avoid. But Thanatos is a hard counter to Thor. Um, the current builds haven't changed too much. My build is also in my previous video if you want to check it out. But he just doesn't have a place in the meta for for 1v1 scenarios, 2v2 scenarios. These are all team fights. So you need a very strong team to pretty much carry you through a lot of the game. You can carry your, th your team through the early game, maybe some of the mid game if you get far enough ahead. But once you hit, hit that point, you're going to hit a wall where you're not worthless and you're not completely terrible, but other gods will jump up at that point, like that late game, other gods will jump up to like their full potential, Thanatos just kind of flatlines, and you're going to be looking to just kind of rely on your team and help your team out. Thor, for me, is going to be S+. My recent video, I said Thor is probably the fifth best jungler in the game. He has a ton of control. You can build tanky on him and still do damage. You can initiate fights. You can carry games to, a, an, to an extent. Late game, you will start to fall off. That's how Thor works. But your mobility... Your global presence, your early damage, mid-game mid damage is insane. Uh, I would recommend putting some time into Thor if you haven't, but maybe not putting all your time into Thor. I don't think he's the best. I don't think he's actually anywhere near the best. I think he just kind of rounds out to that 5th place, 6th place slot. Tier on my list, I hate Tier. Tier is going B. Um, Tier is garbage. He completely relies on farm. Um, beads and a lot of abilities are, can, can make him worthless. If you don't hit a fearless, then you're pretty much worthless to your team. You can frontline and stand in their face, but at the same time, you can die. You have low mobility if you get locked down. Your ult is great, but if you ult into a fight, you're probably putting yourself out of position. The blink meta does allow for him to have a little bit more wiggle room, but like I said, very weak god, weak early, weak mid, needs farm. I don't recommend playing tier at all. Uller is going to be one of the only hunters I would ever put on a jungle tier list. I think Uller is so much fun in the jungle. It's, he sucks early. He needs farm. You can combo full, like full combo abilities, but he does need farm to be relevant. I do build a normal hunter build on him when I do that for fun. I'm going to throw tier, or, uh, Uller in the B tier. Um, just have fun with it if you want to play it. Try it out. It's something that's interesting. He's one of the only hunters that really has potential of being a jungler. He's just not quite there. And here we move on to the new god. Shing Ten, the new god. You guys are going to think I'm crazy, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure some people will, some people will agree. The new god is great. He is going to be one of the best junglers in the game. He'll probably be one of the best solo laners in the game eventually, once Bluestone is nerfed. And he might even work his way into the uh, the support, support role. 
Um, a lot of people have said he is a good support, whatever. But I think building Shing Ten as full damage, getting the gem of, I mean, getting uh, pen boots, getting Chronos pen, getting gem of ISO, getting a tank item, getting some penetration, getting a rod, or even dropping the tank item and getting a Soul Reaver, you can pretty much one shot somebody with a full combo. Your ult is amazing. Your mobility is amazing. Um, your two is a crazy kind of lockdownish type ability that can really mess with people. Uh, can cancel dashes and other kinds of things, which is awesome. And your one is a per percentage based damage. It does it does a base damage, a number, and then it also does 2.5 percent of their health each second that it's on them, which is ridiculous. That's actually a lot of damage, especially since it's on a short cooldown and you're building CDR. Um, put some time into this god. I think he might find a little might might see a nerf at some point, but this god will be something I want to play in the SPL. I am very interested in this god. I am very excited to play this god. I put a lot of time into him already just to mess around with builds and kind of playstyle. He has a very weak early game in most situations, but once he hits like level 8, level 10 in there, takes off. And then he just skyrockets. He's probably one of the only guardian type gods that is better late game than early. And it's it's just a really interesting concept. Now Ymir on the other hand, one of those other guardians that's very good. He's very interesting. I want to say he's A+. Pairing him with someone who can initiate is ridiculous because you're going to build full tank on Ymir pretty much. You're going to have a couple damage items, but mainly tank items. You don't die very easily. You have a wall that can control a team fight. You have a stun that very long stun that can control a team fight, and you have a lot of burst damage. You have an ult that can kind of zone or just do crazy burst damage. He's good at securing objectives early with his ult and his burst and his kind of uh, the wall and the stun kind of keep keep people out, which is great. I don't play very much Ymir, but I do think he has a place in this meta. There is one well other jungler. I almost forgot. I just just noticed this. Humbats. Humbats is going to be S minus for me. He's you could argue that he's S, but Humbats is one of those guys you just kinda of pick because there's not much else you want to play. He's very, very safe. He is very much a top god, but he's not a counter to very he's, he's really not it's not like Humbats counters this. That's not a thing. Humbats is one of those safe gods. He's he's an average pick, but a great god. His team fight potential is amazing. Um, the only thing you're really going to get countered super hard by is an Awelix, realistically, on Humbats, which even then it's not that crazy of a counter. You can kind of play off of the uh, counter matchup that is there. But, like I said, he's not one of those gods where you're like, he's first pick, I'm going to pick him, or he counters this, I'm going to pick him. It's just kind of like you pick him and you let things play out. You, you, play, you can pick Humbats in almost any team comp, meaning you can pick him and your team can play just about anything and you'll be good to go. So that's something you have to think when you're playing this god. And you're, if you see this god in the SPL, that's usually what's going through most people's minds when they pick him. I hope this tier list kind of helps you guys out and gets you to progress further. Like I said, Shing Ten's not out yet, so that is going to be something you can process and practice now and be ready for when he comes out in ranked or comes out in the SPL, whatever. Um, the other gods have moved around a little bit from tier list to tier list, not too much. And I, I just really help. I really think this this tier list is fairly accurate. Very, can't even talk right now. Fairly accurate. I think you could switch some things around, some gods around. But realistically, if you look at this tier list and you play these gods in this order, if you learn how to play Sir Cat, Shing Ten, Al Kuang, uh, Thor, Bologna, Athena, if you learn how to play these gods, you'll be good to go. You won't have to learn anything else. You'll you'll be in a fantastic position to play at a high level. So, like I said, I hope this helps. Um, if you guys have any comments. Just leave them in the comment section, obviously. You can tweet at me if you want to say anything. Um, my Twitter is going to be linked below. Check out my stream. I play a lot of these gods. I've played just about every single one of these gods over the last week. I do take requests. If you guys want to see something on my stream, just come check it out. Tell me what to do. Like, say something in chat. Say what you want to see, whatever. I will see you guys there. If you could like this video, subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. I really appreciate it. And check out my other videos. I will see you guys next time. Oh, this you crazy mother...